Hello and welcome back to Seaside Garage. I have a nasty sounding rear end on my Porsche 924. And I'm pretty sure it's coming from this side and I'm pretty sure that it's going to be a wheel bearing. <laughs> It's difficult to hear when you have a drive shaft and a differential or oh, actually a gearbox back here. But there's definitely play and quite a lot of it. And I can hear the sound from com coming from the rear and it sounds like it's coming from the right side. And if I turn the car left and right, I will hear the sound coming on and off, on and off when it load up, loads up the bearing or, or when the weight is coming off it. So I'm pretty sure this is the point. Could be problems on the other side also, but I have only bought one bearing, so we're going to change this one today. The bearing on the other side feels decent, at least. It would have been a good idea to take off the, uh, the castle nut down here before lifting the car. But I am pretty sure that I will be able to take it off using the big impact from skill. And the drum is off. Now I need to loosen up these. But before doing that, I'm gonna remove the drive shaft in there. There we go. So now I want to remove those four bolts right there. Now I should be able to just tap this one up back out and that was the reason why I had to remove the drive shaft. There we go. I expect to be able to just tap these out. So, uh, okay, oh, it's already loose. So, <laughs> it's not really supposed to be that. I hope it's not too worn out here for the new bearing. But I guess it has been, yeah, it's worn for sure. Oh yeah. That's another problem that I hope to fix in this video. More on that later. There's a circuit behind the bearing that I need to remove before I can tap that one out. Yeah, I'm just changing the, uh, the fluid in the, uh, in the trunk. <laughs> So one well-greased bearing goes in. I'm just going to give it a few taps to make sure that it's going in straight. And then I'm going to use the press to take it the rest of the way just to do it as controlled as possible. There we go. And fit this one that is in between them. And the next bearing is getting a lot of grease. 
And then let's slide that in and press it the rest of the way. There we go. Then I will install this circlip on the back side. And then a new fresh oil seal goes in on the back. Before installing the cap, there's a little O-ring out here. And I'm going to install like this. Then install this cap thingy. And then the outer seal. It is seaside garage after all. There we go. And then this ring. Then let's reintroduce the shaft. There we go. And then I can reinstall the drum. And tighten that down to very tight. I think it's 350 Newton meters. I don't even have one that goes that high, so I'm going to tighten it up and use a big breaker, breaker bar and, and get it within uh, specifications. Yeah, it's not ideal, but it will, but normally it goes, but normally it works. But I can't do that before it's back on the ground, so I'm going to fit, so I'm going to fit the drive shaft again and then take you back when that's done. And then we better take a look at that trunk area. So with the bearing done, I need to do something about that water. But I noticed water in the spare wheel well, and I did not really have time to fix it at that point because I had to use the car. So I drilled a hole to drain it. So the reason why it suddenly started to leak was because that hole has been plugged by something and the disturbance I caused by, by, by changing the wheel bearing has dislodged that piece and then it started to drain. And then I sort of remembered it again. <laughs> but before noticing the water, I also noticed that on a hot summer day, if I cranked the window down, I would get some exhaust smell in the car. And very often that is down to some kind of leak in the seals on the rear end of the car. So when you open up the window, it will create a vacuum sucking in the exhaust from somewhere. I presume it's something to do with that. But let's try to pour some water on this and see if we can see where it comes in. Because right here, there is a drain and right here is a drain. So if I pour water on this area, see where it runs to. Ah, I already see it now. It's pouring down. <laughs> Not much of it is coming out actually. It actually is running. Can you see it? On top of the seal and in. So either the seal is deformed, which would make sense, or it's not clamping down enough to actually seal. Let's see if you can see something. Woo, even more water. Doesn't, doesn't really matter because everything's wet down here. So it needs to dry. It needs to dry out, that's for sure. This is really compressed a lot and it's not really jumping back to shape. It got a lot of tears and so on. So I'm just gonna change the seal because it's a very generic uh, one. I'm just gonna change that and see if it makes a difference because it was very obvious where the water came in. So I can test it very easily. So I'm gonna try to change this. So with a new seal in place, I actually need to buy a longer piece to fit it right, but I can use this for testing at least. It's a bit thicker, so I'm a bit concerned that it might become a problem, but we'll see. That feels all right. Nope. 
Not on this side at least. But actually I think it might fix it on this side. Yeah, it seems to work on this side. Not on this side though. I have been spending quite a bit of time on this, trying to figure out why all that water comes in. It turns out that it seems to be coming through the hatch latch. Um, so after just speculating how it was supposed to be completely watertight and all that, I found a diagram of the latch part of it and I'm missing an important part on this on both sides. So I went and looked in the box of parts which this car came with. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be fitted on this, small trim pieces and so on. And I found something. I found another latch, that's one thing, but I also found this one. This is supposed to be underneath the latch like this. And then the water that will get down here will drain into this drip tray and out this hole where there is supposed to be a hose going through the floor. So it's actually not supposed to be tight, it's just supposed to drain. Really nice that I found this, unfortunately it's the only one that I can find and I miss both of them. I'm gonna search a bit more but I probably will end up trying to find one of these used. Uh, but I will fit it to one side and see if that stops the, uh, the problem on this side at least. To just demonstrate the problem, if water gets in here, and it will, this will happen. It runs straight into the boot. But now I have fitted the drip tray on this side with a piece of pipe that goes through a grommet down there. And as you can see, nothing now happens. So I think I have fixed that leak. But of course only on that side. I cannot find the one for this side. I don't think I have it. So I will see if I can find one. It's, maybe it's not that expensive. You never, never know when it's Porsche part. So I will look that up and uh, get that. And then I hope the leaks are sorted on this Porsche. And I also noticed a couple of rubber grommets that are missing that I think, together with the seal right here, is the cause of the uh, exhaust smell. So I'm going to put some rubber bongs in them and then hopefully I got a couple of problems sorted. As you can see, I also need to wire up the urea wiper because it's cut at the moment. I'll also do that. But this will be all for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.